Ilan Maxwell, accused of luring women and young girls into the late Jeffrey Epstein's evil orbit, began facing her accusers in a New York courtroom this past week. In London, Holly Williams takes us behind the headlines. There is no such thing as a perfect victim. What is a perfect victim? Is a perfect victim a middle-class white girl that goes to a private school, that has the perfect family life? Sarah Ransom says the so-called perfect female victim is pure, innocent and doesn't exist. Those who don't fit the bill, including women like herself with a history of drug use and sex work, are often blamed for their own abuse. It's the victim shamers and the victim blamers. They are the reason why I wrote the book. Ransom's new book, Silenced No More, details her allegations of sexual abuse against Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. But it begins with a chaotic childhood in her native South Africa. A mother who Ransom says struggled with addiction and a rape in her childhood by a stranger that disabled her alarm system. I had no boundaries, she writes. I had no bells. I grew up with people hurting me, strangers hurting me and... So it became, it was my fault. There's something wrong with me. And it's taken me to about 37 years old to finally get an ounce of self-respect and self-worth back that was taken from me. You write about your traumatic experiences in childhood almost priming you. Very to be so. victimised in your adulthood. Can you explain how that works? I think being a victim, a survivor of sex abuse, it, it robs you of your self-worth and dignity. Ransom says she met Epstein when she was 22, introduced by a young woman she encountered at a New York nightclub, who she later discovered was paid to recruit her. She flew to Epstein's private island, Little St. James, thinking she was going on a vacation, she writes. She sounded so amazing and then buff you on this island and, and that's it. Lock and key. There is no escape. There's no one to hear your screams and cries. It was there, she says, she first met Glenn Maxwell and alleges she was repeatedly raped by Epstein. It was made very clear to me that first trip that if I ever went to the authorities... If I told my parents, if I told my friends, if I ever left, Jeffrey said to me, I will kill you. I will hunt your mother and father down and I will kill them. You were terrified. Yeah, of course I was. And you were frozen. I was frozen. I was petrified. Now living in a small village in England, Ransom says her book is an attempt to make sense of what kept her in thrall to Epstein and Maxwell for nine months and why she returned to the island on several more occasions. She concludes she was a victim of coercive control, an easy target for exploitation using financial despair and fear. It became a relationship of you needed him, but he gave you enough where you would always continue to have that need. On top of that, knowing that you had nowhere else to escape or run, otherwise you and your entire family will be murdered. So you're saying mm. it's a situation where you're, you're stripped of your ability to act. You're stripped of your, your own agency. You're, effectively, they take your complete ability to function as a human being. Ransom believes Epstein was a sadist who propped up his inflated ego by dominating the weak. What role did Ghislaine Maxwell play? She was the organiser. She was the engineer. She orchestrated everything. Ghislaine Maxwell had a privileged upbringing in the United Kingdom. The daughter of a wealthy newspaper tycoon, she reportedly introduced Epstein to the famous and the powerful. But Ransom describes Maxwell as an aristocratic pimp who facilitated Epstein's assaults. What do you think Ghislaine Maxwell's motivations were? I think Ghislaine is a very sick woman. Ghislaine enjoyed humiliating us. You could see the enjoyment in her face. 
Ghislaine Maxwell has consistently denied all sexual abuse and trafficking allegations against her. Finally, in 2007, Ransom says she escaped. Fearing Epstein would kill her, she flew to the UK to join her mother. She sued Epstein and Maxwell in 2017, settling with them the following year for an undisclosed sum. Are you still happy with that decision? No. You, you wish you'd had your day in court? Yeah. And that's one of my biggest regrets, is that I'll never have my day in court. And it's a decision I thought was right at the time and I made it to protect my family. And I regret it and I'll regret it for the rest of my life. But my book is my day in court. This past week, Ransom flew to New York to be present at Ghislaine Maxwell's trial. I have so much respect for the girls that are testifying. I just want them to know that I'm there for them and I'm rooting for them. Ransom writes that she survived hell, but told us that she refuses to be defined by it. I don't want people to look at me and remember me for being a survivor of Ghislaine and Jeffries. I'm so much more than that. Can trauma make you stronger? You either sink or swim. And I'm, I have no intention of sinking.